Justin Ghoul, the Warlock Boo here. Today, I got a new webcomic to review for y'all. I know it's been a while since I reviewed a webcomic, but I found one I have to review. I found this one on complete accident, too, so it, it's kind of a good thing, because I didn't know what I was going to review this week till I found it. What is this story, and who is it by? Well, I'm getting to that. This story is Lore Olympus by Rachel Smith. A romance webcomic. Yes, yes, I know. I really usually don't do romance. Usually I stay in the style of spooky or funny webcomics with maybe a little romance pinched in there. But this is something different. This is something interesting. So, so interesting. Lore Olympus is a retelling of the story of Hades and Persephone from ancient Greek mythology. Now, who is Hades and who is Persephone, you say? Well, if you don't know who Hades is, then you, I have no clue what to say to you. But just in case you lived under a rock for a few dozen millennial, Hades is Lord of the Dead. Also, if you go by Roman myth, he's called Pluto. But in this, he is Hades, traditional. In Persephone is his wife in the myth. There is a whole long set of stories, not long, kind of, that tells how he, in some he kidnapped, in some he asked for the rights to marry her, different takes on it. No myth has ever been it's the same on how he gains his wife Persephone. They all agree that either he kidnapped her or he asked her father, Zeus, his brother, making her, her his niece, to marry her. And uh, they never told her mother, who goes crazy, she's goddess of earth and starts making an eternal winter till he gives her back <laughs> the whole story is very weird it's greek greek is weird a bit but in this it's a nice modernized retelling lore olympus is about hades and persephone they are our two main characters and it likes to flip between the two hades is lord of the underworld and it takes place in a very modernized setting Almost Las Vegas or New York City style setting. Maybe not so modern. It has modern amenities. But the look of the world almost has a nice 60s or 40s noir vibe to it. And the gods live on this. This is Olympus. And the underworld looks like that but more Las Vegas style. They live there. And they have parties, they do their work and stuff. While the normal world looks like traditional ancient Greek, which I like that dynamic. It's not like the normal world looks sci-fi or modern. No, it's still ancient Greek. It's just the gods live in more modernized to us ways. It's about Hades. Hades has a bad relationship with a nymph. I really don't know who this nymph is. I know myths, but I don't know everyone. And I don't know who she is. She almost has a... Uh, emotionally abusive relationship with him where she basically calls him trash and because no one else really will go out with him he stays with her and he's kind of lonely he's kind of just upset he's and it all starts with him having to go to a party and the nymph said oh she doesn't want to go with him because he reeks of death she apparently plays these games all the time with him so he gets there and he sees someone he sees someone from a distance Persephone. Persephone is her first time in the city. Her mother is very controlling, very helicopter momish, almost to an abusive level, it seems like. If, memory, if her flashbacks or dream was anything to go by. And she's there with her friend Artemis, the goddess of the hunt. Persephone is goddess of spring. But Hades, as soon as he sees her, tells his brother, She's gorgeous. She's more beautiful than Aphrodite. And of course, Aphrodite, supposedly being the most beautiful woman, knows someone said this, knows who said this, and knows he said it about, and she's pissed. So, she gets her son to help her, gets Persephone really drunk, and puts her in the back of Hades' car. That way, she'll be a st stupid mess. Hades will go, oh, uh, she was just... I." How what could I ever think someone this drunk could be beautiful and I was wrong and stuff. But instead, we see something different. When he gets home, he sees her in the back of the car and, does, and helps her. Puts her in bed, takes her shoes off so her feet won't hurt in the morning, helps her drink some water. Then that's it. He lets her sleep. Doesn't take advantage. Doesn't do anything wrong. He 
and when she wakes up, they kind of hit it off. She's a little more shy, a little more trusting. He's Hades. I mean, this version of Hades. I got to get into personalities of characters. He's a little more. He doesn't know how to act around people. That's something I get off from. I notice about him. He seems to do the wrong thing at the wrong time and doesn't know fully how to act around people. But he, that doesn't mean he's bad with people. He's actually very caring, especially about his brothers, willing to take up for their mistakes and help them out of situations. He's he's just not good with people. And that actually ties in with the myth. Hades was never the one to be good with people. That's why he ruled the underworld. He never had to deal with people. Only people he had to deal with was the dead, and they listened to him no matter what. And I like that. He's also nearsighted, so he has to have glasses. He can't see good. He also I'm going to go into Hades detail. He loves dogs and cars. He's like I said, he's very nice, but not good with people or know how to act around them, which I can completely agree, know how he feels. I am horrible with people. I am bad with telling how people do or what I should act like in certain situations. I am horrible like that. I am shocked as heck I got a wife. <laughs> She's great with those uh, things. Now, how does Persephone act? She's a little more trusting. She's a little more naive. She's new to the city, and she's new to this. She doesn't fully understand everything. And she's more scared because she's afraid her mom will make her go home, not realizing she's an adult. Her mom can't make her go home. And I know a lot of people like this. The characters in this are brilliant. You have Zeus, who's still the flirtatious asshole he should be, but he does care about his brother. You have Poseidon, who's a flirtatious idiot. He'd be the one that sees an explosion and not run away from it, but go, that's awesome! I like Poseidon. There's a lot part in it where... He's talking about mermaids, and they're swimming in a tank, and he's like, they're like angels of the ocean, and the mermaids are flipping them off, and he's like, so majestic. I, I love Poseidon. Then we have Aphrodite, who seems to be the bad guy in the series, which makes sense. She's trying to get Hades not to like Persephone. She's holding over her son that she, he know, she knows where the woman he loves is, and She's not going to tell him unless he does what she says. And then we get to her son, Ares, 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 Cupid. I'm calling him Cupid because I can't say the other name. Cupid, god of love. He's in love with a woman. She broke his heart, but he wants to see her again now. And uh, her mo his mother won't tell her where she is because she's holding it over him to get things done. I love him. He is so on the border of being so over-the-top gay, but not. I love that they made someone that could be feminine, but he's not gay. I know people like this that are just kind of feminine, but they're not gay. They're just – that's how they are. Why do they have to be gay because they're feminine? <laughs> like, why does you have to be straight because you're tough? It's I like that. He kind of borders the line of bad guy. He has to do what his mother says, but at the same time, he feels bad for it. It eats him up inside. And I love his reaction to Persephone. He's holding her to put her on the back of Hades' car, and he's like, You're a jealous by this. She's a cinnamon roll. An adorable pink cinnamon roll. Why? And I love that. That, that line made me laugh. She's an adorable pink cinnamon roll. Made me break down laughing. He's actually very nice. He's very kind when it comes to it. Apparently goes to orgies from one of his texts. You pulled me away from a perfectly good orgy for this? Okay. <laughs> Which makes sense though with the Greek gods, but never does show it. Then we have uh, Zeus's wife, Hera. She's not yet the jealous one I've seen. Like she is in the myth yet. She seems to get along just fine with Hades. She does not get along with the nymphs everyone keeps bringing. She sees them as annoying. But she does very nice to Hades. Then we have the next character that they go into very much, Psyche. Psyche, I think her name is the one that Cupid is in love with. She's the beautiful daughter of a king that uh, 
Aphrodite was jealous of, so she wanted uh, Cupid to make her fall in love with the most hideous thing. Well, Cupid fell in love with her. So he made himself look hideous and took her, made her come with him. And he was teaching, he was being kind to her, teaching her to read, teaching her to write, treated her like she was an equal when everyone else treated her like she was stupid and just pretty. And he loved her, but he was afraid to let her leave his apartment because he was afraid his mother would find out. So else that's terrified of mommy. And her sisters convinced him, no, he's controlling you. He's brainwashing you. You don't really love. She was going to try and kill him thinking that's what, it, but couldn't. But he saw her that she was going to and it broke his heart. She ran off, and now only uh, Aphrodite knows where she is. I know how these myths end. I've read these actual myths. It's just I want to see how they get there. Uh, then the last character they really show off is Artemis. Artemis is great. She is Persephone's friend, and she is the one that is protecting her. She has the sense that she knows how life is in the city, and she's the one defending her and making sure she doesn't do something stupid. And I love Artemis. She's a good friend. She hates Hades, though. She really does hate Hades. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, she's very easy to uh, push against her brother. Zeus does it so Hades can get close to Persephone by saying, Oh, I heard your brother's still the number one archer. But I don't. And she like gets all competitive. Wait, what? Bring him here now. We'll get a bow and arrow. And I'll prove I, I love I love her Artemis's personality. Uh, she she's brilliant that way. From what I get is her brother. Uh, I can't remember his name. Sorry. There's so many Greek names and Roman versions and new version name change. Uh, he's uh, seems to be a playboy, nice car, nice stuff, and I want to see how that is. Uh, I'm kind of can't wait to see how they really introduce other characters. I want to see Hephaestus. I want to see Ares. I want to see Athena. I want to see all these characters. But uh, the story itself is so well but so simply put together. The characters feel alive. They feel living. They don't feel like just these Greek gods out of reach. They feel you can easily understand them, sympathize with them. Feel how they feel. And then the art. Oh my gosh, the art. The art is gorgeous. It's simple, but gorgeous. Every character has their own color that represents them. Hades is blue. Persephone is pink. Zeus is purple. Poseidon is a sea green. I mean, it's gorgeous. And I really like it. It's, it's a combination of these beautiful colors combined with, I hate, I, Steven University style art. And then at the same time, ancient Greek artwork of these. Like on the vases or stuff, you always see painted on the walls and vases. It looks a gorgeous combination. The world is so neat to know. I want to know, but it's so easy to identify with because it's our world, but not our world. The characters are, it, every character is unique, but at the same time magical. You have Persephone who, when she's worried, spring activates. Her hair grows. She gets flowers around her. She always has to cut her hair, and she always cuts it really short because it gets so heavy. Got Hades who doesn't like to wear his glasses but has to half the time. I mean, I just love these characters and the way they're put together. The art is gorgeous. The story is simple but deep. That's how it should be. It's a perfect retelling of the story, and I do hope it's not just – it doesn't end when Hades gets together with Persephone. I hope it goes deeper. I'd love to see this person take on other stories from Greek mythology, and I've, they're already taking on two, the story of Psyche and the story of Persephone. Great stories. On a side note, my mom used to tell me the story of Psyche and Cupid all the time when I was a kid. She always, I don't know why, but she always did. <laughs> But it, it's – I give you – tell you, you got to read this. I'm going to perf give this a 9 out of 10 on my review. This is one of the best web comics I accidentally just stumbled across. It was a suggestion on my Facebook, and I went, eh, I'll look at it. I'm bored. And I read it all in one night. 
In fact, I read it all last night. I spent hours re-looking at the pages so I could review this. This is such a good thing. So far, I'm reading it through Webtoon on my app. It has 20 pages up, but only 18 chapters. Because two of those chapters, one is art and one is a Q&A. Excuse me. Because the re uh, writer of it hurt herself. I didn't go through her whole Q&A, so I don't know what happened. But she apparently got hurt. But... I suggest read this. Give this writer your full support. I And another thing, I'd love to see this as a TV show. It'd be a great TV show. A cartoon, really. Just because we need adult cartoons like this that aren't always stupid comedy, but can have a deep romance story. Something like this. I actually really enjoy romance, but romance at the same time bores me. I need more going on, and this is perfect for me. It has so much going on on the side. So much more than just the romance. And it keeps my attention perfectly, yet the romance is still front and center. Read this. You will not regret it. You will love this. Trust me so much. Give this writer... Your full attention. She deserves it. She has done this amazing story. I don't know if she's done anything else. I haven't really gone into the detail and seen. But as you can see in the side of my screen, all this beautiful art, you can see what she's capable of. I give this a 9. There's a B link down below if you want to re read it. Go ahead and read it. But if you got a webcomic you want me to review, tell me. I will try my hardest to get to it. Or is there a cartoon or anime you really want to know about? Tell me and I'll review it. A video game? Tell me. I'll review it. Or is there a spooky story you need reading? Is there an SCP you want to know more about? Tell me. And I'll read it. Or I'll find the tape on the SCP with that weird little scaredy cat doctor reading it. I'll do that. Just tell me, is there lore? I'm actually going to try and do a lore dive eventually on Hades. There's so much to do there. But until, but tell me if there's a lore dive. Some lore you want to know about a character, real or fake, and I will do it. I am up for your suggestions. But until then, this has been Warlock Bill, hoping to be spoken y'all later. Bye. <laughs>